wood products from rattles to cutting boards to create a one-of-a-kind gift that will be cherished for years to come. Oh, that very clever producer, John Noyes, uh, bringing us back into the Mark Johnson show with a little bit of uh, the Beatles for the benefit of Mr. Kite, uh, because I'm joined in the studio by now by a very jolly individual, Jim Thompson, who is an artist and musician and other things, very creative guy from Montpelier. Uh, he's joining me in studio today with his um, some of his creations. Um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I walked into the Uncommon Market, which is a great little market in downtown Montpelier, and I happened to look up, and the entire, pretty much the entire ceiling is covered with these beautifully hand-painted kites, real, actual kites that fly. Uh, and they're painted uh, a lot of them with, with on animal themes and things like that. And there, there's a flyer by the by the uh, cash register that says that these were made by a Montpelier resident named Jim Thompson. So I thought I'd ask him to come in today and and talk about his kites. Jim, uh, welcome and thanks for brightening up our studio here this morning. <laughs> thanks, John. Fun to be here. <laughs> uh, hand painted kites. Uh, you have three of them here with you. Uh, yep. One of them is an eagle. Yeah. Uh, the face of an eagle, uh, the face of a lion, and the third one is a cow, the, the head of a cow on a <laughs> kite. A and I guess this is a cow you actually know. Well, I, this is a, one of Ray Burke's cows that I mm -hmm. went up and photographed uh, yesterday morning so I could uh, make a cow kite. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Ray uh, has, uh, is a musician. Uh, he's been in a band with you in the past, and he also used to be on DEV. He was the uh, state road dispatcher, and he, he was is. he was the road scholar. That's right. Known as the road scholar, famous throughout the state. He, Ray played saxophone with me many times, and wherever we traveled in the state, everybody recognized Ray Burke. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, let's talk about the kites. Yeah. Um, how did you get started doing this? Oh, boy. Well, uh, this is all, all stems from a carnival ride in August that uh, did something to my neck and made it impossible for me to play music. Oh. Uh, and I had to do have some creative outlet. And uh, by um, uh, March, I was in the hardware store. I am a photographer and have been doing look, getting some framing supplies. And I noticed the wooden dowels. And I remembered that back in my 20s, I had made some kites. And I thought, well, geez, maybe I'll try to make make a few kites. So I bought some dowels. I went to the drawing board, got some acrylic paints, and uh, went home and, and made a few kites and, and had some fun with it. Now, I hadn't picked up a paintbrush for over 30 years either. Mm -hmm. um, but I had been talking to the Uncommon Market about uh, hanging some photographs. And when I mentioned I had kites, they got excited. And Sharon said, "We've uh, ever since I bought the store, we've pictured kites in the ceiling. Huh. So it was kind of serendipitous, and, it, and, and uh, I brought six down on uh, the 1st of May, and on a Sunday we hung them up on the ceiling, and the next day two sold. So I thought, well, maybe, we, <laughs> maybe we've hit something here. Yes, yeah, so this is an artistic display uh, and a lot of color in the store, and they are also for sale uh, $75 a piece, at, I believe. At the Uncommon Market, that's the, that's the price. Uh, elsewhere, there'll, there'll be more, so if you, want, <laughs> if you want one, that's the place to go. The original distributor. Well, <laughs> that's that's, right. uh, I think that's a perfectly reasonable price for a, a kite that was handmade and hand-painted. Uh, what's, what's the material for the actual, aside from the dowels, what's, yeah. what's your canvas yeah. there? All that is is brown wrapping paper, craft paper. Huh. Okay. Uh, it's uh, this is a uh, deep sea fish line. Yep. That uh, that's that's framed in and and uh, good old glue Elmer's glue to <laughs> put it on there and and the uh, most of the tails these days I've been making out of out of uh, cloth ribbon from the so they get kind of a streamer effect and mm -hmm. kind of try to match the theme of the kite. Yeah. Yeah. So the so the lion tail, the tail of the lion kite is uh gold and black and uh and orange to match the uh yeah. the lion's coloration. So uh have you actually flown one of these? I I have flown uh I don't fly the ones that come out well. 
I had a, I had a functional kites, yes, and then I, there are the, a, the artistic kites. Yes, I had a tropical fish that didn't quite come out well enough, that I, so I, I've been flying that just to make sure they fly well. Yeah. We, the, the other thing I wanted to test was in the old days, um, and, and usually people uh, poke a hole in the kites to put the bridle string on. Mm -hmm. And I found one person online who, who claimed that you could fly a kite with a bridle string attached to the top and the bottom, which would allow no hole, it would, you know, allow you to do it without poking a hole in the kite. And so that's what I had been trying. And, it does, and, and they do fly, so when I sell them, I give directions on, on both, both methods of flying. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's active kite flying. You don't just tie it to your lawn chair and, and, and sip your lemonade. You, just, you, <laughs> you get out and have some fun with it. Yeah. Uh, did it take you any, any practice? Uh, did you have any, you know, kites that didn't fly so well or uh, as you were developing this? Uh, no, really. Uh, um, the only kites that didn't fly well were back in my 20s when I tried a couple <laughs> of different designs. Uh, but when I stick with the basic bow kite, the diamond shape, and, and, and with, with a bow to it and put a tail on it, they, they all seem to fly pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the people who have bought them, and I guess, you know, they've sold. I, I emailed yeah. Sharon when oh, I, yeah. I knew you were going to be on the show today, yeah. and, and she said that they've actually sold quite a few. And yeah. I, yeah. Have you gotten feedback from people? Are they buying them to fly, or are they taking them home and hanging them on the wall? They're... The ones I've heard from are only hanging them on their wall and have not mm -hmm. dared to fly them. <laughs> <laughs> I, so you gotta, I encourage people just to fly them even just once before you hang them on your wall because they just take on a whole new personality when the wind blows some life into them and they're looking back at you. Every animal I do, or, or other, I do, I've done some, like, human-type faces. I've done the sun and the moon. But everyone is looking directly at you with their eyes. And, and the eyes are the things that really get you when you fly them and they're looking right back at you and the life is blown into them yeah. yeah most most of your kites not all of them but most of them are the face of an animal sort of the si similar sort of layout uh you know full face looking right mm -hmm. at you and a very dramatic large size too so uh so yes that would be that would be quite a sight uh, up in the air in one of our parks these days uh, <laughs> now that we're actually having a little bit of nice weather yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> um now you mentioned you did ray burke's cow yeah uh which is your newest uh, the yep. paints the paints dry we yeah, can say just that. barely yep. um but uh do you do commissions i do i do i've done some uh, people's pets for them mm -hmm. uh a house cat or a dog and and uh um that's all that's always fun yeah yep um now uh your kites are on display at the uncommon market uh, in downtown montpelier the corner of elm and school streets yep. uh is that uh, they went up in early may i don't know how many times i walked yeah. into that store <laughs> and didn't look up. i know i know i've had lots of friends say jim i saw your flyer at the uncommon market i said well did you see my kites they'll say no i said well you got to look up <laughs> Well, it used to be just sort of like the, you know that old drop ceiling of the the, uh, the acoustic tile, and, yeah. and now there's actually something to look at up yeah. there. So, yeah. uh, is this gonna is this ongoing, or is there a time limit to it? No, or? no time limit there. That's going to be ongoing. And then okay. I've got a show coming up in uh, Burlington uh, for July and August, and into the September Art Hop at the um, uh, Speaking Volumes down on Pine Street. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, um, uh, it's it's amazing. It, it's it's wonderful that you've taken a mishap yeah. that, that took away your music uh, and, and developed this whole new thing, which, which obviously, uh, at the risk of sounding punny, uh, has really taken off. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, so, so this, is, this is quite a thing, and I, I'm awfully glad uh, that you've managed to do this. Um, you said carnival. Um, <laughs> what actually happened? I messed well, up your neck on the carnival <laughs> ride. Apparently, I had some uh, stenosis in the neck and some and some disc problems that I didn't know of. And I went on a, took my son on a carnival ride, one of the ones that spun one way fast and spun the other way fast, and and uh, ended up feeling uh, headachy and nauseous and dizzy and got off. And it, and 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 it kept the symptoms stayed with me. And they and they looked at my brain for a long time. And then they finally a physical therapist said, "I think it's your neck." And sure enough, when they did the MRI of the neck, they they decided that was it, and, and it's, uh, they think it's a condition that's called cervical vertigo, which is kind of rare, but people usually get it in a car accident if they have a bad neck. Yeah. Um, and they, 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 they haven't given up on me yet. They still like to poke and prod and try to fix me, which is fine, and, and I let them. And, and, uh, but meanwhile, I just 
do what I can do and not sure. worry about what I can't. Yeah, well, you've certainly found an outlet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess that creative drive, you know, get, got, has to get out in some way or other. That's uh, right. Are you hoping to get back to music sometime? Or? Oh, I, I'd, I'd love to, in, in one fashion or another. And, and, and uh, um, you know, it, it certainly has been a been my big passion all through my life so so uh you know i i still have a drum set and two pianos in my living room and and uh and i'll get on and do a song or two before my head starts spinning <laughs> <laughs> now now people can see uh people can see your kites at the uncommon market and buy them there yep. um if people want to get in touch with you uh you have an email address or i do it's if you can remember vermont lenses it's jim at vermont lenses Dot okay. com. And Vermont is spelled out. Spelled right out. Vermont lenses all all together. Yep. And that and that's because of your photography work. It is, yeah. That, that particular website. It is. I haven't set up a website for kites yet, so <laughs> that's the next thing. That'll be the next thing. Yeah. Jim at VermontLenses.com. Uh, Jim Thompson, uh, making kites and hand painting kites. Uh, they're they're striking and uh, very colorful and very beautiful. And you can see them at the Uncommon Market in Montpelier, corner of Elm and School Street in uh, downtown Montpelier, which is a great little store, too. And it's yeah. not a bad place to spend a few minutes. Uh, Jim, thanks very much. Uh, congratulations on yeah. finding such a creative well, outlet. Thank for you. Yourself. Yeah, thanks. All Appreciate right. it. Mark Johnson's show here on Radio Vermont WDEV. John Walter's in today for Mark. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back after these messages.